cake on. Hey, and good morning. It's Saturday. It's 10. It's uh, the city of Oakland Park, and so it must be the talk at 10. It's hard to believe we're starting this at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. There's something about this, getting this thing launched at uh, the correct time is kind of, kind of a challenge. This has been quite the week here at the Urban Farming Institute in Oakland Park. This has really been, this has been something. Good Lord, we've had uh, calls from Jamaica. Uh, we had a call from the Virgin Islands. We had just a lot of questions about uh, gardening and how to get ready for gardening in the tropics and what, are we, what am I going to grow. And we had a lot of talk this week about aquaponics. We had uh, people wanting to grow heirloom tomatoes. Oh my. And of course the uh, the number one uh, the one number one tomato that everybody wants to grow is a big beef or a big a beef steak tomato. So we're going to talk about tomatoes a little bit today. We're going to talk about summer seeding and why the idea of the city of Oakland Park Fire Department. Let me tell you what, these guys are amazing. So we're just going to let them make a little bit of noise here. This is this is amazing. We sh we'll just wait, and here they come. <laughs> They're on the on the on the task, and there they go. Fire rescue. Um, this is just an amazing group of guys and ladies that uh, that work in the Oakland Park uh, Fire Department. It's a uh, municipal fire department. We share space with them here at the um, uh, at Park Place in uh, in Chaco Pistorius Park. This is just really a very, very uh, dedicated group of guys and, we, and ladies, and we want to thank them very much for their service. It's tremendous. So if they interrupt us, they interrupt us. It's what they do. Thank you very much. So we had calls from all over the place uh, this week, and uh, we want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about what it is that you can do and the mistakes that you really want to avoid, because they're, summer growing is a little bit different, but nonetheless, the guidelines for successful growing are pretty much the same season long, uh, regardless of whether you're in the fall or winter season, or if you're in the summer season, or if you're like we are right now, where we have lots of humidity, uh, rain, we have uh, just all kinds of opportunity, and we want to talk a little bit about that as well, and we'll be doing, of course, quite a few videos on that. But, you know, people send us stuff from time to time, and uh, I have no idea what this is, so we're going to start with this. This is called a Peacock Pruning Pal. Got me, but it showed up, and uh, we're very happy that uh, the United States Postal Service was placed into service in delivering this to us. So let's just open this up and see, uh, see what it is. Uh, it's got a picture of a peacock on the outside. I'm sure it has nothing to do with peacocks. It's blue. <laughs> it's sizable. My goodness, look at this. It's a swimming pool. No, it's not. And it's got stakes. What do we have here? Oh, it's got a storage hook. And discard debris. Used for trimming leaves. Pick up, oh, 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 oh. This is the Peacock Pruning Pal. I have absolutely no idea. That's the train, by the way. Um, yeah, they go by a lot. Uh, so we'll just keep rattling. Right the Peacock Pruning Pal, there it is. You can probably look it up. Uh, peacock. Uh, and and, and here's, the, here's our postal guy delivering the mail. <laughs> also brought us the Peacock Pruning Pal. <laughs> See you later. This is amazing. This is what it is when you're outside at the Urban Farming Institute. It's, a, it's, it's just an amazing sort of thing. So let's, let's take a look at this. This is, um, it's easy to assemble, used for trimming, leaf uh, trimming, uh, leaf pickup, um, discarding debris, and it stores on a hook, and you can roll it up, and somewhere in here is a hook. And so what it looks like that you do, this is kind of an interesting thing. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at this. It's got uh, Velcro doodlies on here. So here's what you do, I think. Uh, I'm elevated above the top of the camera. 
But so you get the idea, it's a big blue sheet, peacock pruning pal. Inside we've got these um, stakes and the idea is that this goes around the base of your tree and it's held in place uh, with these Velcro dudes here and then you can put stakes around it to hold it up and when you're uh, trimming around it or leaves are falling off or whatever you can just pick up the leaves in the uh, peacock pruning pal and then dump them into a garbage can. That's kind of cool. Uh, not sure how we're going to use this here immediately, but uh, we appreciate uh, the good people who sent this to us. Thank you very much. And it's going to be uh, the peacockpruningpal.com. And uh, this is, uh, I would suggest you go to that website and let's see what, uh, see what they do. It comes in two colors. It looks like we got blue, but it also comes in green and white. So uh, there you go. And it has all of these additional parts that uh, come in the box. So there you go. My, nice way to pick up leaves. Quite exciting. All right, so let's spend a minute on this. Now we've done this a couple of times before, but I want to, uh, I want to re reinforce the idea that you know, summer growing for me is one of the most exciting times to, to have a garden because really it's going to test your skills. And one of the things I like working with, of course, is, uh, is, is, is our go-to coconut. And if you're thinking about starting seeds, and we really recommend that you uh, start with seeds, uh, that you're going to need to have some sort of an effective method to start your seed. And we find that starting with coconut is really the best approach. Now let me just give you an example of this so that you know that, uh, that we're not talking magic here. Now this is a plug. That's a plug that we made from coconut. Now this plug is absolutely dried out. There's nothing, but you can see that is a really good plug. And if you were to buy these, they would be probably somewhere four to six, eight cents a piece and you have a 72 cell tray, add it up. But take a look at this. Now watch this. This is going to be kind of an interesting sort of thing. Here you go. Watch this. Use it again. There, look. Here we go. Here's another plug. All dried out now. It's, it's, it's served its purpose. It's done what it's supposed to do. Use it again. Coconut is one of the most absolutely versatile products that you can ever use for the purposes of starting seeds. Now let's take a look. This is a part of a 72 cell tray and this is one of our plants that we used for demonstration probably a month or so ago. And here, there's the plug. There it is. It's ready to go into the garden. Completely compatible, pH of 7, no disease, very safe, very clean, very good to go. That's it. And it's so important that, that, you, that you think about gardening uh, as an investment. You know, if you have to go to the grocery store, you're going to spend three, four dollars for a head of lettuce if it's hydroponically grown. You know, you can grow that at home. You can, you can actually do that at home and you can really have an impact on your produce budget. And you know for sure that it's grown properly. And uh, every time I go to the grocery store and I see people going through the, uh, the produce department, it's just like if it's not in a bag, you know, you're, you're going to have people going up and they're going to be punching and taste, you know, touching and shaking. And I'm not sure about that, you know, especially when you can do it at home. I use these 72 cell trays. They look like this. They're a couple of bucks. They're not expensive. But I also use this tray not only for starting plants, but I use it to plan my garden. Now, I've been doing this for a while, so my garden planning is pretty, pretty open-ended. Uh, there are some folks who really like a very, very structured, very well put together uh, garden. Mel Bartholomew wrote the book on square, square foot gardening. Very effective technique uh, in gardening. You can look that up on the internet if you'd like. But I like to use these, uh, these trays, and I just use a pair of my garden cutters, and you want to get a good pair of garden cutters, too. You can get them for a couple of bucks, and they'll last for a couple of bucks. 
or you can spend eight or ten and they'll last for a while or you can spend 20 bucks or something and you'll get a really nice pair of cutters stainless steel that will last you for years it, you know my cutters are so popular that the and and they're highly mobile which i did not realize you know i i it must be that late at night when the lights are out these these the, the handle must turn into legs and these things walk away you know what it is to track these guys down? They leave no markings at all. Just kidding. So here we go. Notice how hard this is to do. And why would you plant 72 of anything? I'd... My heavenly days. You know, if you take a look at our chef's garden, and that's hydroponic. If you take a look at our chef's hydroponic garden, uh, the towers are going to hold... Uh, 20 to 24 plants in each tower. That's 20 to 24 plants, and in the hydroponic world, that's two cases. Can you imagine all of a sudden having 20, 20, 24, or 16, um, or 20 heads of lettuce all at once? Can you imagine? You're going to have a lot of lettuce, and you have to start thinking about, gee whiz, you know, a garden is planted many, many times during the course of a season. This is not something that you do just one time. This is something that you do many times. Plants will give up, will just get tired, and they'll say, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired. Now, some plants will do that. For example, an uh, eggplant will be with you for a great period of time throughout the summer. Okra, another great plant, and the flower is edible, the fruit is edible. It's just a wonderful, wonderful plant. But they all start somewhere, and they all start from a seed. And these, these cell trays here are just absolutely great. I don't use carry trays, it's just not necessary. I just use a cell tray, and I use this then to plant and to plan my garden. Well, take a look, and I'm going to go over this with you in real, uh, real time so you get the idea. This is coconut. You've seen this. We had this out here last week. I mean, coconut is just really super, super good. And take a look. Now I'm just going to put coconut in here, just like this. And if you have a potting bench, of course, that's going to be even better because then you can make a, a real nice mess on your, potting, on your potting bench. And then you just pull that material off, put it back in your, uh, uh, in your container, and you're good to go again. So you would think, well, gee whiz, I must be done with this. Well, no, not quite. I have to, you know, I have to compact that just a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to do that. You know, okra is really probably underrated. I, I really love okra. If you're, if you're Cajun, you're going to know okra. If you're, if you're Southern, you're going to know okra. There are so many ways it can be uh, put together. In North Carolina, my aunt used to, uh, in the summertime, fry okra. I mean to tell you what, fried okra is absolutely amazing with some corn flour on that. Whoa, amazing. She would also boil it. I wasn't so big on the boiled. But then I went down to uh, the bayou country and bumped into some crazy Cajuns. And let me tell you what, you got okra, you got gumbo, you've got one of the most wonderful dishes ever, a regional dish. Uh, of world renown. It's just absolutely amazing and of course okra uh, is an important part of that of that dish. So okra is always a, a good 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 summer summer vegetable um, or actually in this case it would be a fruit. You also have eggplant which is also good and you know people this week came in and said you know I want to grow beefsteak tomatoes. Congratulations. When would you like to grow those? Well, we'd like to grow them right now. Really? Uh, have you tried that before? No, we're from, uh, you know, the northern climes, and uh, it's a very popular uh, fruit up there right now, and we want to just do it here because we've moved down now to South Florida. Well, disappointment reigns. It's just, it's just unfortunate, but, you know, guess what? They're not going to do very well. They're going to grow. You can grow them. But getting the fruit that you're expecting, probably not going to happen. You know what makes it work is the nighttime, daytime temperature differential. And, uh, you know, like this morning, this morning when, when, I, when I walked out of the house, it was, oh my gosh. It was uh, about uh, 5 o'clock or something, and it was just walking into a wall of humidity. It had rained last night. It was already 80 degrees and a, 
hundred percent humidity, and you're not going to grow tomatoes successfully in that kind of in that kind of environment. But you can grow tomatoes. Just have to change the variety. And uh, cherry, many of the varieties of cherry tomatoes will do well. And of course, our old standby is the Everglades tomato. And you can get those seeds online. Occasionally, we have uh, Everglades seeds here. And we have a, 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 one, a very good gardener here at uh, Urban Farming Institute that lives not far from here. And uh, he grows Everglades tomatoes. And the way that he protects his Everglades tomatoes and makes sure that he gets a good harvest year after year is by tending them with a lawnmower. Now, I, I think it's a Toro lawnmower, but I'm not really sure. It could be a Briggs and Stratton, but it's a lawnmower. And he just mows those crazy guys. They self-seed, they come back, and you, next year you even have more. And these things never go away. And they're very small. They have a great tomato flavor. They're good for preserves. They're great in chutneys. They're great just uh, grilled. Uh, do a little grill of uh, Everglades tomatoes. Put that on some fish. Oh, my, with some uh, onion and a little bit of garlic. Can you imagine going to the beach and bringing in a pompano, one of the most wonderful fish, or even maybe a small mahi if you get lucky, and you can take that home, clean that up, and then here you have the right from your garden, which you have carefully tended with your lawnmower, the ingredients for an absolutely wonderful sauce to use on that super fresh fish caught off the beach here in Fort Lauderdale. It's just a wonderful sort of thing to think about. So first, of course, uh, <laughs> we have to have some seeds. So let's take a look at this. So you saw me do this. There was no no secret about how I did that. Now I'm using my stick. Now this is uh, again a very special stick. You have, I've talked about the stick many many times. I'm left-handed. Now it's important to have a left-handed stick uh, if you're if you're left-handed because the left-handed stick doesn't work quite as well if you're right-handed. So in which case then you would need to have a right-handed stick. Now the good news is that this Quercus virginiana Virginianus, which is right here beside me here, this oak tree, uh, is able to make both right-handed and left-handed sticks. I happen to have one of those right here. Uh, after careful examination and picking up some twigs off the ground, I was able to identify one of these guys. Listen, if you're enjoying this video, or if this video is making any sense to you, or if you're finding this to be entertaining, then come on in and, uh, you know, we'd love to talk to you. And if you have comments, of course, you can make comments. Uh, it's going to be up on YouTube in a little bit. And, uh, you know, we'd like for you to like the video. And, and you know, we just, we just like people to do this. And, oh, by the way, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. And our newsletter is free. And all you have to do is go to the uh, web page. It says subscribe here. Sign, you know, just sign in. And uh, Stacy puts that newsletter together for us. And it'll come out on a Friday night. And it'll tell you all kinds of good stuff that's going on over here at the Urban Farming Institute. So, here we go. Using my left-handed stick, I'm going to make an indentation here in each one of these cells. Now, I'm doing this because this is really the correct way to do this. I typically don't use this technique, but I do wear a mask. So, <laughs> all right, a little political humor there. It's Saturday morning. Let's see, what do we have? Oh, look at this. This is New Zealand spinach. Now, what's really good about this is this is, this should be with us for a while this summer. Uh, we're growing it right now, as a matter of fact, and here we are, beginning of June, and we're, look at the size of the seed. That's a really big seed. Um, and I'm just going to put one of these. Remember, use one seed. You don't have to put two or three or four or five. Now, some people do. And if you want to do that, knock yourself out. Here we use one seed. And here you go, another seed in there. Seed here, seed here, seed here. Notice that I've done this so long that I actually have six seeds. So there you go. And, uh, and here we go. Then I just take the, take the magic left-handed stick, uh, and I just depress this just a little bit into the coconut like this. That's it, that's all I do. I'll take a little bit more coconut, sprinkle it on top, just a little bit like that. And now I'm gonna wait three to five days. 
And in three to five days, that, uh, that uh, New Zealand spinach is going to germinate. And it's going to be with us and produce an absolutely wonderful crop. And what did it cost me to do that? A few pennies. And this is the story of gardening. Uh, we have a, a, a grower that has been with us now for 10 years. And, um, and this grower, is uh, his entire family is vegan. And he started with us in hydroponics. And he, a couple of weeks after he got his, uh, got his set up running, and he, he sent me this email. And he says, hey, John, if I went to the whole paycheck store and I bought this produce, this is what it would cost me. And guess what? It was the same cost as what, or a little bit more than what he paid for the hydroponic system. And he was in this morning, and he's still using the same pots uh, that he used uh, eight or ten years ago, the same pots. So if you're thinking of, of looking at hydroponics, and we really advocate hydroponic growing because it's a super, super productive way to grow in an urban environment, then by George, you want to do this. The other, the other story that we want to tell you about today is a phone call I got from Jamaica. Now, this is very, very interesting. In Jamaica, you know, they grow a lot of very interesting things in Jamaica. Um, they have a, a very interesting culture there, and uh, they're very much into native fruits and vegetables, and it's a very, very interesting sort of thing. And one of the gardeners there was, uh, sent me some photos of a garden bed that he was, what, uh, that he was building. And he said, John, what do you think about this garden bed? It was built out of block. Uh, CBS construction block, you've seen them in the building department at Lowe's or the Home Depot store. He said, well, what do you think? And it was two, two blocks deep. That's 16 inches deep. And we said, you know, probably you don't need to be 16 inches. I mean, you stop now. He said, well, I'm only 14. I said, well, stop while you're ahead because you've got to put soil in that. And here our soils are horrible. In Jamaica, they're actually quite good. So you want to be economically oriented when you're doing this. Our beds here are only 10 inches deep. And most of the root mass is going to be in the top four or five inches of that bed. And why would you want to put a lot of soil into your bed when really you only need about 10 inches? Now here at the Urban Farming Institute at our community garden here, the Oakland Park Community Garden, we talk about... Uh, Soils a lot. In fact, we provide soil to the, uh, to the gardeners. It's part of what we do. And this is one of the reasons the garden is so successful in our opinion, because we provide tea, we provide great, great soils to grow in. We call it a growing media. And it's uh, just a wonderful sort of way to grow. So I want to wrap this up a little bit today by saying, look, if you want to grow really, really well, Use a coconut as your starting media. No need to spend a whole lot of money on prepared growing strategies. Not necessary. Here's how to do it. Well, I just showed you how to do it. We do this four or five times during the growing season. And you're going to have tremendous, tremendous production. And you even know that when you do that, you're going to get a really good plug that's going to be with you for a long time. And if you don't use the plug, perfectly good. It goes right back into the pot. So that's it. So remember that the best day to plant a seed is today. And until next week, have a good growing experience. Bye-bye.